Welcome to today's lesson where we're going to discuss regulating the cell cycle. We're going to talk about the regulatory proteins that are in cells that help control both internal and external regulators on the cell. We're going to talk about apoptosis, which is controlled cell death. And we're also going to talk about cancer, which is uncontrolled cell growth, and what are some causes and what are some treatments for cancer. So the first thing we're going to deal with is regulatory proteins. Throughout history, they started looking at what actually causes the cells to reproduce, what causes the cells to divide, what causes the cells not to, and they discovered these proteins within the cells, which they called cyclins. They regulate the cell cycle, so they called them cyclins. There are a couple of internal regulatory proteins, and these internal regulatory proteins control events within the cell. So things that happen on the inside of the cell that tell the cell that they need to divide, like size of, uh, the actual size of the cell or other pieces within the actual cell itself. These proteins actually allow the cell cycle to continue only when certain criteria have been met. So as the cell cycle goes, which you've already learned, you have interphase, which has both G1 S and G2 phase, there's actually a regulatory protein inside the cell that will not let the cell leave S2 phase and go into G2, uh, sorry, leave S phase and go into G2 phase until all of the DNA has been duplicated correctly. If the DNA has not been duplicated correctly, the cell cannot leave S phase. There's a second regulatory protein within the cell cycle that controls metaphase. Now, metaphase is where the chromosomes will line up along the center of the cell. If those chromosomes do not line up correctly and the spindle fibers don't attach correctly, then they can't be pulled in anaphase. So there's a certain cyclin that actually takes and regulates that. If um, the chromosomes have not lined up correctly and the spindle fibers have not attached, then it cannot continue into anaphase, and metaphase just keeps going until it actually happens. There are other internal regulatory proteins, but these are just a few examples. So the internal regulatory proteins control things that happen within the cell. So if that's the case, then the external regulatory proteins must control things that happen outside of the cell. One of the major pieces here is that it does not respond to the cell cycle. Okay, The internal regulatory proteins control what happens within the cell cycle. The external do not respond to the cell cycle because they only control things that are happening outside of the cell. One of the major pieces of external proteins are called growth factors. They allow the cells to grow and continue growing. Wound healing is controlled by these growth factors. If you have a cut, your cells should be touching on all sides, but when you get cut, your cells are not touching on all sides, and so they produce these growth factors that tell the cells that they need to continue to multiply so that they can heal that cut, and all of a sudden you have cells covering where they need to cover. These are controlled mostly by spati spatial relations. So if the cells are not where they need to be, not filling the space that they need to be, they will continue to reproduce. So for example, if I have a Petri dish and I have some cells inside the Petri dish that are touching down here and this whole area is filled in with cells and I have cells over here that are touching and this whole area is filled in with cells but all the cells want to be touching on the sides. This area is not filled in, so those growth factors are going to tell the cells to reproduce until this whole area becomes filled in with cells. And that's how your cuts heal, or bone fractures heal, or other things that you have issues with in your body actually heal. So those are regulatory proteins. Those allow for cell division, Apoptosis actually controls cell death. Apoptosis is programmed cell death, 
and this helps to actually shape organisms. Have you heard of people who are have what they consider webbed feet or webbed hands? What happens is when you are developing as a baby, before you're born, your fingers actually are webbed. And apoptosis happens, your cells actually have genes that say break down this area, break down this area. If your genes don't actually do that, what's going to happen if you're missing those genes that tell it to do that? This isn't going to happen and you're going to end up with flaps of skin in between here for the cells that didn't actually die and go away. If you have too little, for example, you're going to have webbed feet like I just said. If you have too much, however, a lot of times you end up with certain diseases depending on where the um, program cell death happens. An example of that would be Parkinson's disease, which, can, which affects um, the nervous system and things like that. So programmed cell death is something that needs to happen within our cells, but too much or too little can be an issue. So finally, we're going to talk about cancer. Cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. So that means your cells are just dividing and dividing and dividing, and there's no stop to them. These this uncontrolled cell growth forms what are called tumors. The tumors are the large sacs of cells within your body that shouldn't be there. You can have two different types of tumors. You can have benign tumors or you can have malignant tumors. Now, not that a tumor is ever good, however, the prefix beni means good and the prefix al, mal, means bad. So a benign tumor is one that's not going to spread throughout the rest of your body. So it's not necessarily a really bad tumor within your body. You can go in, you can have it removed, and you don't have many issues after the fact. A malignant tumor, however, is one that will spread. It will send information to the rest of your cells to continue dividing, to become a problem with the rest of your cells, and so the malignant tumors are the ones that are really bad within your body. There are many causes to cancer, but the biggest piece is that all of them have defects to the genes that control cell division. Okay? Whether they're defects to the internal regulatory proteins or the external regulatory proteins, it doesn't matter. They're defects to those genes that, can, that produce the proteins that regulate the cell cycle, so the cell cycle just keeps going. Many causes for this could be tobacco products, Radiation, the sun produces radiation, so this is why it's not good to go out in the sun. Or just infections that you can get within your body that affect your cells in general. Treatments for cancer right now are somewhat expansive but limited at the same time. We have surgery, which you can go in and you can remove a tumor and if the tumor is just in that one spot, Usually benign tumors, they go in, they remove it from surgery, and you have no problems after the fact. Radiation can also be a treatment for cancer. Radiation is a cause of cancer, but radiation can also go in and kill those bad cells then if they program it correctly to be able to go into your body, into the specific bad cells, hit those cells, and then kill those bad cells. So radiation is also a treatment for cancer. And they've also developed these chemical compounds. Chemotherapy is a chemical compound that they introduce into the body, introduce into the area um, of the cell, and you can actually have um, these chemicals that go in and kill the bad cells, and then you can have a good result from that also. So, today we've talked about how we regulate the cell cycle with those regulatory proteins, how we stop cell division to actually control what the body looks like, and then also what happens when we have that uncontrolled cell growth.